Okay. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be today. I'll let the our two uh, earwigs go through the um, people that are here at the moment, Jay and Sid there. That's what that's what they look like. I'm going to shrink them in a minute because, honey, I shrunk the kids. Best way to go on a diet, get Robbo to shrink you. You go, Sid. First, first in tonight was uh, Darren. Um then Rick come in. We've got Rick, Darren, and Charlotte in there at the moment, and we'll good day to all you guys. Thanks all for right. joining. Okay. Now, just to reiterate, this is what we're making, the second half of it. Hello, Leona. Hey, Leona. Hello, Leona. Right, this is what we're going to finish making tonight. Now, last week I did this section and marked it all out and everything. I finished, Hello, hollowing, I finished hollowing it out over during the week and sanded it and everything. So it's ready to go when I'm ready. Hopefully we'll get the rest of it done tonight. Now, put my glasses on. The part, the part that we're doing now is the base that this part here sits into. Okay? Now, there's a few points you've got to watch when you're doing this. These parts here are extremely thin. So you've got to watch it because if you put any pressure on the bevel out to the side, that will happen. So it is a matter of gliding the bevel down and not putting any force. You do not rub the bevel. And you should end up with a nice clean cut in there that you don't need sanding. So we'll get on to that now. Okay, doke. Now, for those of you that weren't here last week, these are just ordinary bits of pine straight from Bunnings, which is uh, our local... Uh, lolly shop I call them because they're not hardware stores in my opinion and they're definitely not timber merchants but Hello Neil Ah, good day Neil Hi Neil now, The first thing I like to do here is to put a mark around the outside here so that I know where I'm going to take this little curved bit down here out to because if you go too far inwards you've suddenly got nothing left and what we're aiming for is a square section in here and hopefully it'll work Jackie. okay Jeffy Okay, so I think that's our mark about there. I'll just switch it off and have a look. Oh, no, in a bit too far. We've got to come out a bit. There it is there. Now, by the same token, Remember I said always face the pencil downhill, never uphill yeah. when you're working into something that's rotating. So we've got our outside marker. Using a half inch spindle gouge. Now those that were here last week remember, or they should remember, that this was limited to only three tools. <coughs> a half inch spindle gouge, a skew chisel and a parting tool. Now, whenever you're working on end grain and things like this, I always start in the centre and work out. So the grain's supported across the cut. We're down on our line there now. Now, all my tools are ground at 45 degrees, with the exception of a couple of uh, odd ones that I grind at 60 or 30, depending on which way you're looking at it. This is a 45 degree grind. 
and it's a thumbnail grind. It's not a swept back grind. That's a traditional way of sharpening a spindle gouge. And I tend to use traditional tools. Gotta progress very slowly so you don't get massive chip out. Right, let's have a look and see what we've got. Now, I'll just switch the overhead camera. You won't see it on this one here otherwise. And you'll always get a little bit of chip out on this corner here. So I've just got a fraction more to take off just to get that down nice and neat. As you can see, it's on the opposite corners and that's where you get into trouble with all bowl work or cross grain work like this on a face plate or chuck or screw chuck or whatever you're using. Just one more pass. <laughs> the famous one more pass. Yeah, the famous one more pass. And you can see the size of the shavings that I'm taking off. Not like my usual coil springs, but like fairy down. And you've got to have a touch like an angel's kiss. Well, there's an old saying, Robbo. Yep. Oh, well, I'm an old fart, so... Right. I thought I'd leave that one to Robbo to say. <laughs> That's looking better. That, most of that will sand out now. Right, now when you sand this, of course you can't get... You can't normally sand it like this because you'll round over these leading edges if you do and leave the back edge square. So the best way to sand it is with a block. Sometimes I actually use a piece of wood just to hold it there and you just hold it in nice and gently to it. Let it get up to speed. Right. All done without too much rounding over, which is good. Now, those of you that were in here last week, remember that we had to make this 60 mil in order for the chuck to expand out into here. So normally that would have been 40 mil there to fit into the chuck as a perfect fit. But I had to make it at 60 mil because to expand out inside here, you can't use the jaws that way. So they don't close down to 40. So set our calipers, our verniers. On the subject of verniers, I'm astounded at the number of people that try measuring a diameter like this by putting the, the points of the verniers on. Put the verniers on the side like that and measure halfway up. That gives you a true true diameter, then not, not something that's... Uh, it's probably me, Charlie. And then it's like the old Dan Buster's thing with Barnes Wallace of lining up the two points where he used the two searchlights to get the height of the planes for the bomb run. I'll put it on the end camera again. Now, this point here never actually comes into contact with the timber because if it does, it will flick over. So you're only working on this point here and you keep a gap there. So if you've got 
<clears throat> the line up. If you want to, <laughs> if you're getting blind like me, put a pencil line in there. Drop the tool rest down again. And we'll hollow that out a little bit. Again, using the spindle gouge. And always keep inside the line if you're fitting something into it. Don't come to the line because if you do, nine times out of ten you'll make it too big and it'll be a sloppy fit. Hello, Michael. Michael Smith's entered the room. Sorry, what's that? Michael Smith's entered. Oh, good evening, Michael. From Armadale. I got it right tonight. Now, I generally cut the tenons in with a skew chisel. Now, this is going to be parallel down here because it doesn't matter. This, this part here gets glued in, so you've got plenty of glue surface around the top to do it. All right, we'll do a trial fit and see how that goes. Oh, I've got a bit more yet. Right, now I'm just going to switch to the overhead so that I can show you something. Most people, when they're taking out a recess like this in a little box or something like that, move the chisel in this way, just straight in. That is a good way to get it oversize or undersize. A better way of doing it is to use, I'll just get my little skew chisel here so you can see it. Just a small one, right? Now, these parts here on the edge of the bevel where it meets the, the shaft, are actually called shoulders and you cut with that so what you do I'll turn the camera around again you actually tilt it up like that and it's got to be in like that to get that edge there dead straight into the thing and you slide it out so it actually goes into the hole go back on the overhead one again come on what you're actually doing is pulling it back this way when it's still right in the hole, okay? And it takes a micro cut. But it has to be tilted up off, off the rest and just operating exactly on this little shoulder just in here. Right, try it again. Feed that hound. That's the Alaskan Malibu yeah. next door. <laughs> Malibu. <laughs> hound of the Baskervilles. Oh, yeah. a bit more. Darren, just to answer your question, mate, a lot of these, a lot of the, the Gold Coast turners have heard this. Right. Now, this is what happens if you run into the chuck, okay? It leaves a big mark in it like this. <laughs> if you drop it off your bench, if you drop it off your bench, there's where it always lands, always on the point. And trust me, if it's got a little point like this, it will never work properly if you're doing things. Then, of course, we've got the sharp end up here, and this is the blunt end. And some of the chisels I've seen, you can't tell the difference. You might as well be using the handles. So and then we've got the heel down here or the short point toe up here, long point, shoulders on each corner there, so, right. This is the part where it does not pay to be in a hurry. Get rid 
of that one because it's not the one I want. Oh, we've got a way to go. Yeah, I measured the wrong one to start off with, I think. That's another little trick from uh, Rollo's Black Book of Dirty Tricks in that if you have two of something, always make sure that you're measuring the right one. <laughs> Hello, Tommy. G'day, Tommy. How are you? Hey, Tommy. Now, remember I said last week that we have to have this part here. Uh, wait on. I'll get it round on the camera here. Perfectly flat, otherwise it's going to sit on the corners if you get a, an undercut here. Well, it's the same on the top here. You've got to make sure that that's flat. And what I do is I'll put it, I'll put it back on the end camera again. Now, because it sits like that, these corners are a fraction longer. So I'll put a mark out here that I'm going to round over this edge here and I don't want it to come in underneath these corners here. And just flatten off the top of this. Again, you can't concave that top surface because otherwise it will sit unevenly. So it's got to be pretty straight and flat. Geez, <coughs> oh, any closer would be perfect. Have a look, see. No, uh, it's got to go a bit deeper. Just in the centre bit, I've left a bit of a dome in it. Now, there's no finesse in doing that. It's just waste. You get rid of it. And it also helps for the glue to get in there too, to hang on to. Ooh, just a smidge more. Okay, just to show you I'm not kidding you folks. Couldn't fit a cigarette paper down inside there, so that's a good fit. Now I'll just round over this, I'll just sand that little edge off a bit. And sand off this. Now we get to the tricky bit. Now we've got to turn off the tenon that we put on here and start hollowing it out so that we get our square sections up here. Is there something flapping in the wind or something? 
Excuse me while I have a slurp on. Pretty quiet. Excuse me while I have a. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's nothing from me. I'm inside tonight. Right. Now, as I've said before, I always like about a finger gap between the tool rest and the wood because it gives you a little bit of movement in the chisel. Put it back on the end camera again. Now, again, because I'm a chicken, you can actually see it in the shadow line, but I put a pencil line in here anyway, just as a bit of a guide. So I know I can come out to that pencil line without getting out the, the edge of the mud. Hey Steve, Steve T's in the room, Robbo. Temple boy. Oh, good day, Steve. How are you? Haven't seen you for a while. Now I'm just flattening off the base a little bit here so it's a bit flat. And by moving the chisel right round to the side. I'll go to the overhead camera again so you can see it. By moving right around to here, once you get the cut started, you can go down in there, you can do it with one hand once you've got your bevel in, in support, right? So, and you can make it, if you keep the bevel facing the way that you want it to go, you can make a straight in cut. Now, the secret here is not to go through where you've got the hole that's holding in the centrepiece. So we hasten slowly now. Now, the chisel is actually cutting just off the point. Wait on, easier on this one. It's cutting just off this point, off the centre point here. You never cut on the centre, except to make the cut, to start the cut with. As soon as you get the cut, you rotate the flute 45 and bring the cutting edge down here so you've got complete control with the bevel in contact with the timber. Now, as I said earlier on, there is no pulling the bevel out against that. It is gliding the, the, the bevel down. It's a gliding or a floating cut. If you start rubbing the bevel, just for the ones that weren't here before, I won't do it on that one. If you try rubbing the bevel on something like this thin, that's what happens. It'll just snap off. Said he's been having internet issues and been practicing how to sleep, which needs more work. Yeah. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a catch. I do have them occasionally, particularly working on something like this. Can we rewind that? We'll go back and look later, Joe. <laughs> yeah. I'll edit it out. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how we're going. 
So if you flick over to YouTube now, you'll be able to see it 20 seconds later. Yeah, true. Good point. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, I'll go back to the end camera again. As you can see, we haven't quite broken through the outside here. Now, this is where it starts getting hairy, and this is where I'll start using the skew chisel, actually, as a scraper. So tell me, do you want the overhead view or the, the end view like this? Leave it there. No, I'll be right, Neil. Now, the observant ones of you will notice that I actually tilt the chisel up a little bit like that off the rest. It's because if I keep going straight down, because of the width of the tool here, that's where the new Hamlet tools are great with their rounded over backs because it fits into the thing. Whereas a square tool, like a parting tool or something like that, as it goes down, it forces itself out because it's going up in thickness here. So I tilt it up so it's operating just on this extreme point. I was actually going to be rude here and say, well, it's still not as short as yours. <laughs> Robbo was talking about his legs there too, by the way. <laughs> right, let's have a look now and see how we're going. Ah, yes, see, we're starting to get it. And it had a bit of a crack here. And that's going to disappear in a minute. Oh, might have to go down a little bit more yet to get the to get the size of it. Bugger. Over. Train, Jay. Neil, Neil said he didn't get a cat. Sorry, what was that? I knew it was pointing out that he didn't get a catch. <laughs> right, that's looking better. Now, what I would actually do there is actually sand these in now just to put a little bit of edge on it. It's starting to get extremely thin on the edges here. Mainly because I made a bad blue, I actually went too far out on the round over here. So just be careful if you're doing this, all right, that you don't do that. Right. Now, the only way to sand this, really, the best way is to make sure that you get your cuts. My legs were full length, but it was 40 only you can get it. Sorry, I don't... Don't understand that one, Neil. Okay. So you can sand down in here all right with it rotating like that, but I wouldn't bother sanding down here around the inside edge here. Just make sure that you use a very, very sharp tool. Jeez, your computer's going crazy. I think I think uh, Neil's computer's going into um, lockdown or something. No, nah, Neil's in Queensland. All right. So make sure that you get a clean cut down along here to avoid sanding these, or you can hand sand them. But it's a devil of a job. Hi, Guy. Hello, Guy. How Hi, are guy. you? Now, remember last week I said that this chuck key never leaves your hand. Right, now we start doing the lid, this part here. This one's easier, this part's easier than the uh, the underneath here. So and Darren Kelly has just joined. Sorry? Oh, Darren, Darren Kelly, Kelly yeah. has just joined. Okay. 
So we put another block in. This is where the three blocks start coming into their own. This fortunately is a lot easier than the bottom part because it's not as thin. I just got to remember how to do it, that's all. Okay, so we do a planing cut across the front first just to level it all out. Yeah, pretty much, yes. Steve. Yes, Steve, it's just, as I said last week, <laughs> <coughs> to us imperial speaking things, they're four, four by twos, <laughs> plus metric one, they're uh, 90 by 45, and for the Yanks, they're two by fours. You got them all covered there, Robbo, well done. Right, now, oh, chips in the cup of tea don't go good. Now what we're <laughs> doing is we're making the lid for this. So we have to size this so as that fits in the top, like so. Whoops. Like I say, I must have an odd shaped head because the earphones keep falling off. So it's the same thing again. It's what what are you confused about, Rick? Sorry? Oh, Rick's just put, um, get confusing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> again, measure across like that, not try and balance it like this because half the time you'll miss. So always just sit the edge on. Close it up. And, and make sure you measure the right one, is it, Robbo? That's a good point. All right. <laughs> you can thank me later. <laughs> I'll do that. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, make sure you measure the box, not the lid, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Now, this is the reverse of doing the base. You put your, your lines in, again, not touching that far side point, so I line up, and just so you can clear on the camera, the pencil line there like that. Now, because you're going inside something, you make, you make sure that this is bigger. So. Always work outside the line. I'll put it onto the overhead one. You can see that while I want to stand in your way. Again, I start across the face. What we're doing now is working up to the extreme point up here to get the little points on it like this. Hence the name Pagoda Box. Now I virtually start just, just talking and turning at the same time, getting whispers on and I cop a place full of sawdust. Um, I'm just starting inside the shadow line so that I've got plenty of room down in here for the box to seat up into. into that. And 
and again a very very fine cut. This is where high speed actually is very very helpful. Okay, we'll do a uh, a shear cut on that now to just even out the sides. Now I said last week that I uh, the week before whenever I did that bowl, I actually prefer a spindle gouge to do a shear shear cut because you can see what you're doing. Notice that the flute's angled over at 45 degrees. And you're working in the same place as what you cut with, and you just gently move it up and down. See with a shear scrape, you can go either way, it doesn't matter. The spindle gouge is ideal because it puts the chisel at the right angle, the tip at the right angle to do it. starting to look pretty good. I like to form that shape before I actually start working on this part here so that I can work into solid timber instead of square bits all the time. Let's pull this up a bit. Now you'll notice I'm just outside the line there, so that I can fit it in nicely in a minute. Again using the skew chisel as a scraper, negative rake scraper. Steve T wants to know when you're going to use the roughing gouge, Robbo. Sorry? Steve T wants to know when you're going to use the roughing gouge. Ban him! Lock him out. <laughs> well, we've got spanners now. We can do that, can't we? Right. Yeah. We can sort him out. Yeah. Look, it's got remove, report, put user in time timeout. Oh. Use it from this channel. <laughs> Right. It doesn't often happen that you get it dead right first time. So now, personally on boxes, I like for general use, I like a lid that you can lift off with one hand and not have to hold the whole thing and pop it like that. That's all right for exhibitions and other wood turners. But it's no good to uh, women that are holding jewellery in one hand and then have to take the lid off a box or something to put the jewellery in it. So I always make them a little bit loose. And this one came in dead on. So, right, now I'll finish rounding it over. Come out to here. Curve up into here. Wow, oh, that looks pretty good. You're very quiet tonight, Charlotte. <laughs> Again, if you want to sand it, use a block or do it by hand so you don't round over those leading corners. Okay, now that's as far as we can go with the chuck, so we've got to, oh, not, not with the chuck, not yet. Now to make the top part of this lid, I use a jam chuck. You could, have, you could hold it in the jaws here, but the problem is the jaws are going to leave marks on it. Now, I do have jaws, that, soft jaws, that I could hold that and probably do it okay. But I'll make a jam chuck to fit it into.
So Steve T says, yeah, loose lid is much better for the ladies when they throw it at you too. More pieces means more damage to the head. <laughs> you sure you don't want us to ban him for a while? <laughs> now, I know that my wife is not watching, but all I would have to do if she threw something at me is stand still because she'd miss. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'll turn this completely round because I don't like four corners flashing around there. using the same settings as what we had before. Now remember this time that we're going inside, so we have to be inside this line. So Neil's just put up, you can use the split conduit too around the spigot? Yes, you can too, yep. And that. The bee's dick. The bee's whisker. Well, already, sorry, already said it. <laughs> now again, well, I'm I just can't report. Again, I'm just using the, the shoulder of the, the skew chisel just to ease it out of fraction. There's 19 in the room, Robbo. Oh, very good. So close. I must admit, I love watching the Japanese turners that do their little rice bowls and things in jam chucks. They just whack the chisel in there, do a quick fit, and it fits nearly perfectly every time. But I dare say they've done a few thousand of them, so you tend to get good when you're doing that. If you have any questions, folks, just ask and put a put question in the front. Oh, no, no. I reckon as 
less than a cigarette pipe of thickness. Neil has commented that the camera positions are much better tonight, Robbo, so that little bit of work was paid off. Very good. Thank you, Neil. Right. It's got to go a fraction deeper. Yeah, Leona, that's because he's turned off the wife's internet in the house. Yep. Did you get both of us at once? What was that? Oh, Leona said the picture's very clear too. Ah, oh, good. Thank you. Steve has oh. a question. Yeah. I don't think you need to really read it out, though. <laughs> well, as a matter, as a matter of fact, right on, right on. To get the COVID coffee, believe it or not, I just use ordinary palm olive gold soap. All right. <laughs> <laughs> There's the fashion tip for the night, folks. I'll send you my goat's milk soap. You'll never look back. No, I've tried that. I'm actually, yeah. I'm actually allergic. I'm uh, partly allergic to all my, a lot of soaps, and that's about that's the only one I've ever found. It's because they don't mix the lye properly. Sorry. They don't mix the lye properly. It's one of the main ingredients. And if it's not mixed properly, you, you get rash from it. Oh, yeah. I'll mix it properly. Right. I'll go back onto the overhead camera again. Nobody wants to look at my ugly face. I get it every day. Now, this is a little bit of trivial information, but believe it or not, we used to turn 15-inch bowls on a jam chuck because we didn't have chucks when I first started. Okay, now the secret with a jam chuck is to always work back towards the chuck. If you come in from the side here like this, you're trying to lever it out. So what you do is you come in from in here, not like, hey, hey flyer. That's a demonstration on what not to do. Yeah. Right on. The worst part is I've got to take my jacket off so I can get my headphones off to go and get it. Which pulls my glasses off. <laughs> He's got the headphones off, Steve, so you're lucky. We're all a talented bunch, Leona. We're, we're very talented over here. <laughs> no, not quite that old. Not quite that old, Steve. I, we actually had Bronze Age tools by then. <laughs> <laughs> Right, uh, what I might do is I'll just... Did, did that piece come on? Play a bit, yeah, that's right. Of course, Neil, I could do your trick and super glue it in. <laughs> Will you skew take it, Robbo? No, now that's better, it's actually wedged right in there now there's a there's actually a slight taper on the lid and it just was enough to not seat it properly 
that's my excuse anyway, so here we go again. Okay. Now what I'm doing there is I'm actually using the bevel to push against the back. So this time as you do use the bevel to hold it into the in towards the chuck the whole time. That's better. Now, at the moment, I don't want to take too much out of the centre because I want the rigidity in here so that I can do the, the little pretty bits on the end, all right? No, they're a bit they're a bit too soft actually, Steve, yeah. Now you always have to give room for the chisel to work down into into a space. If you try to force it right through there in one cut, you're going to waste your time. So it pays to come back the other way and just give it a bit of little bit of relief space to go into. So Neil's got a question. You're making the top. Why are you hollowing? Because it's got to look like that, Neil. Can you say that? Yeah, that should explain it, Robbo. Yeah, it's bright enough. It's got a little <laughs> dome. It's got a little got a little dome in the corner of it, in the centre of it. Now I'm starting to form the dome in it. Little flat section here for the finial to sit on in a minute. Now because the finial is round, it does pay to undercut the section where it sits so that it sits down nice and flat. Oh, your number's going up over there too, are they, Steve? No, the dome wasn't com the dome wasn't completely full height, Neil. It was about half an inch under. I've made this one a little bit smaller. So okay, just a matter gonna... of artistic license, Robo, doing that? Yep. Uh, there's no copyright on this. Is that another one we need to ban? <laughs> Why? Nothing. <laughs> just shouldn't have done this way. Not that way. Not this way. <laughs> right. Let's let's have a look and see what it looks like. Yeah. Right. I've got to come down a bit steeper in here yet to get that in there to get a nice even curve around here. And that's what you're aiming for, is an even curve. Yeah, it's getting there slowly. Pine really is a lousy timber to use for this, but... Now, the actual cut at the bottom of that <laughs> is not really 
it's more a scrape. Sorry, glad for leaving. Thought it made another bottom. No, no. Okay, the actual cut down in the bottom here is a scrape because you can't get the bevel of the chisel around. So it's a very, very fine scraping cut off the. We've got a question and a comment in there, Robbo. Off the sides here. Who what? So Darren. Darren has asked, what timber would you use for preference, if not pine? I, probably a very close grain timber. I'd, I've never tried it on anything else, but I would say that hue and pine or sassafras would be absolutely fantastic. I'd keep away from um, blackwood or any of the coarser grain timbers, but... Uh, <coughs> yeah. That's what, that's what I'm beginning to think. Neil, it's, whoa, there's some great, either that or you're back into the liquor cabinet, into the liquor <laughs> cabinet. Yeah, maybe. And I know, <laughs> I know he doesn't drink. Someone's been adding something to his coffee then. Oh, well, that could be. Oh, coffee. You haven't, you haven't been around there, Charlie, have you? <laughs> Not what I was implying, but okay. <coughs> okay, just clean this up a little bit down in the bottom here now. <coughs> okay. Right. Now we've got a fairly even curve around there, albeit we've got a few little chippy bits in there. Now, again, you have to make sure the cuts are pretty good there so that it's nice and smooth. Now, Hello, Rob. Ah, uh, Rob CP. Hey, Rob. Uh, how are you? Right. Now, we've got to drill a hole in the centre here to fit the finial into. So the way that I do that is that point of skew chisel, and put a little recess in like so. Now this is very technical, this bit. This is a two and a half mil drill. All I do is just hold it in the thing. I'm pretty good at holding things straight and even, so I just push it in. That's it, done. You can Hello, set Nick. up a drill. You can set up a drill chuck and everything if you want to. But oh, I find that's cool. Now, sorry. Uh, ah, Mr. Ellis. Rightio. Now, to get this out of here, most of the time, a little bit of a knock will get it out. But if it won't come out, again, get your skew chisel and thump, put the grain, so the grain's running dead up and down with the chuck, and give it a thump on the end grain. And sometimes <laughs> it'll come out like it's starting to move. So oh, tight. Oh, it's a good jam chuck. The other thing you can do some. Sorry? Do you want me to come and help? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You'll bring his absolute, hammer. Absolute disaster. I haven't got my pocket knife in my pocket. Uh oh. Okay. Just work your way around it. Yeah, break right the leg. I'll see if I can get the steel rule down in there now. Don't break the legs. No, that's what I'm trying to avoid. Oops, sorry. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you sure you sure you didn't super glue it in there, Robbo? No, I didn't put any super glue in it. <laughs> there she goes. Oh. Right. Now, so far we have our base and our lid. Now we've got to make the finial. Well, Steve just had a good suggestion there too, Robbo. Sorry? There's a hole in the jam, putting a hole in the jam chuck so that you can use a knockout stick through the headstock. Yes, I've done that, and I've also drilled a hole through the side and put the airline into it to blow them out. If I'm doing production work, that's what I do. Now, for those that not here last week, I'll, I'll leave this one in. What I did was turn this stick with a groove in it here so that it actually seats back in the, the jaw slides, not on the jaws because the jaws just don't give enough purchase on a little quarter inch bit like that and they wobble, whereas on the slides, it's quite firm. It's nine o'clock, Robbo. Yeah, I know, yep. Yeah. Uh, I nearly finished. Okay. Now we're going to make the finial. I might actually put onto the overhead camera for this one. My head's not getting in the way, is it? No. Rob just said you can stream till 10. Yeah, I don't see uh, uh, SK Craft up anywhere, and he's normally on, so... I don't know what's going on with the lives, lunchtime lives. Now you'll notice that I use miniature tools for doing this. Come on.
Ah, you didn't say it. Lucky we're all thinking it. Yeah, we're all thinking it. It's okay. A design opportunity. That's two, that's two tonight, Jay. Yeah, two tonight. Jeez, that's unusual for me. Okay. All fixed. It's your fault, Nick. <laughs> Time out. Neil said it was too fat anyway, Robbo. Yeah, I agree. It needed to go on a bit of a diet. <laughs> now, whenever you're sanding anything like this, if you try to sand it just normally like that, you're likely to break it, all right? So, uh, it can easily, because it's been used on a skew chisel, it can easily be sanded with about 320 or 400 grit. But what I do is I put my thumb in behind it like that and sand it up like so. Now, so as you keep these nice crisp edges here, here and here, always come up from the bottom and work your way around it. Work your way up to the point here. Let's get rid of that. So, Temple Boy's just a really good idea for his live Monday. He said he's going to do a go to box. He doesn't think anyone's done one before out of construction timber. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> now, to do, to do the cove here, roll the paper up like that. So it's, so it's got a little crease in it and come into the centre of the cove and work up towards the edges and don't dub them over on the side. Now, when you go to, as you know, when you go to fit things into a hole, you make this edge here concave so as it sits down flat right around the peripheral of the edge. So I'll just get our parting tool here now. Now you'll notice that I've got the parting tool angled across so that it comes in and part of it is actually cutting on the shoulder of this like it was on the skew chisel to get the lids to fit. That's also another, another trick if you're parting off is to use that edge pushed hard against the part where you're parting off with the chisel slightly tilted over towards that like the cut and it leaves a nice clean cut down where instead of a rough rough surface. Now to get the size of the tenon, I just measure the drill on the shank. I'm astounded at the number of people that try to measure it up on this part here and make sure it's on a part of the shank where it's never spun in the chuck. Now, if you don't feel confident in doing this, don't do it. What you do is you take a little cut and then uh, measure it with it shut, with it stop. And we just use this huge chisel to snip it off. So Rob has a question there, Robbo. Yep. The, the soon to be Robocop turnings. Uh yeah, wait on. Does the edge does the edge need special attention when sharpening to run to cut down the edge? Sorry. What tool are we talking about, uh, Rob? 
I think the parting call, Robbo, like you were just showing there before. Oh no! As long as, as long as it's a freshly edged, freshly sharpened edge down here, it does have. In fact, on some Can't of them, you really, sorry. Can't see it. Oh. Can you see it now? Yep. When you sharpen yeah. it, in some cases you actually get a little bit of a burr down there. Now, I don't run burrs or anything on any of my scrapers. I always, uh, believe it or not, sharpen them off. But it actually leaves a nice sharp edge down here that can just uh, slice through anything. In fact, uh, if you've got a minute, I'll actually show you. Just wait on. I want to make sure that this fits. Et voila. Very nice. nice. Rightio. Now, just to show Rob, just hold on a second. I've got to get a bit of scrap timber. Oh, man, I can just reach it. Good. We've got time, so... Sorry, what's what's Jaffy on about there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the postal service. service. Okay. Now I've got a bit of thickness in this one, so All right, I'll just get it to completely round. Now, about there. Now, I'll widen this cut right out so you can actually see what I mean. Okay, you're going to need a bit of imagination here, Rob, so I'll just zoom this in a bit. Imagine that this side here is this side here. This is the part you want to keep, all right? So I'll just show you what it looks like without doing it. The cut off a parting tool is always very, very rough. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not. Yep, yeah, That's you can. Torn to hell. So, one way to avoid that is like this. Now, you could, if it was that wide, you could trim it with a gouge or with your skew chisel. But if you're only working with the two thicknesses, two widths of the parting tool, you're not going to get a gouge or a skew chisel in there. So, what you do. That's straight up and down. You angle it across like that. And you can see it's cutting on up on the, the edge of the, the chisel here. And the surface has improved out of sight. That's what I was trying to show you the other day, Joe. Yep. No, I've, I've been doing that. So does that answer your question, Rob? He said, awesome, Robbo. So I'll take yeah, that as a I'm, yes. All right. So that's the way to do it. Now, just another thing. Right, like, Jappy, got... Jappy's heading off. Uh, all right, then. No worries, Jappy. How are you going with those singers? Seven minutes? He's not going to answer me by the look of it. <laughs> Must have gone. Exit, stage left. Right, anyway. 
whenever I have a piece, like normally when you part things off, you end up with a scrap bit in the, in the lathe like this. Now, I use these pieces for just practicing. If I've got a, a parting tool, I'll just run down the face like that. See how smooth I can get it? Or I'll get my gouge and I'll run down the face just to get a nice, not like that. <laughs> ah. Come on now. To see, see if I can get a nice clean edge on it. Or I'll grab my skew chisel and do the same thing. Or I'll do a peeling cut. Just to practice the different cuts so that you're down to 10. That's great, Jappy. So I never waste a little bit of timber in the end of the thing. And quite often what I'll do is if it's uh, an inch or so thick, I'll just flatten it off on the end and use it as a glue block or something for another job or something. One stage I had hundreds of the bits around there because of the jobs we we're doing. But, all right. Now, any questions? <laughs> Not so far. Ah, very good. Can we have a look at what you've made put together? Oh, yeah, sorry. If you, if you like what you see, guys, hit the like button. Even if you don't like it, hit the like button. We, we, know, where you, nah, we know where you live, though. So. <laughs> right, there we go. I'll just zoom it back oh, yeah. a little bit. Not that way, Charlie. <laughs> that way. Okay. So Yeah, it looks good. It's it's a great project actually for clubs and things like that. Because it's got just about every cut that you ever need for uh, for um, doing wood turning. Like you've got spindle turning down here, you've got measuring and marking and everything else. <laughs> And you don't need special tools to do it. Yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, right. Is he, he's clo Neil's close enough to you to, or is he in Queensland, Robbo? I was just thinking he's running how brave he's being. No, no. Well, he's 15, 1,800 kilometres away from me, so it's quite yeah, safe. No, so, Plus, so he's not being that we're brave. Not, yeah. We're, we're not allowed out of sick Victoria, you see. Well, it's getting it's getting better, Robbo. I notice the numbers are coming down. Yeah, they are slowly, which is good. Like, um, I uh, I rang a bloke in Perth the other day about something that I did, and he answered the phone because he saw the number. He said, "Oh, somebody from sick Victoria, right?" So. <laughs> yeah, you're dead right. I'm I'm pretty good at getting back at Neil. He he spends. I'll just I'll just hire out his uh, camper spot for the Christmas holidays. That's all. He spends Christmas yeah, down there. That's a trick. Yeah, that's a trick, Rob. I don't get mad. Get even. Yeah, that's right. Or either that, or I'll put his rent up. <laughs> Double it. Yeah. Triple it. <laughs> Triple it. No worries, Guy. I hope you enjoyed it. You're still selling those uh, gold um, hinge things for the boxes and that? Guy, Guy Michello sells uh, fantastic uh, hinges, brass hinges for 
like they're the ring hinges for jewelry boxes and things like that. I'm just wondering if he still sells them or not. Yes, yes good. he is. So there's a free plug for you, Guy. Look it up on the net, Guy Michella. Yeah, it was a bit of a bummer. Uh, Mullaney wasn't on this year, was it? But I was going to come up to it, but of course, Victorians are persona non grata at the moment for anything. We're not allowed out anywhere. No, no anything. That's right. Although Turn South Australia went ahead, which I'm very cheesed about, but good on you. Yeah, I'm hoping to be able to come up. Um, I'm hoping that uh, I can resume my normal travels. I just, I think I was telling Sid or uh, Jay today that my truck has not had any fuel in it since uh, February. So that shows how much. I just saw Guy's link in the in the chat there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, hey, guy. Uh, Temple Boy Turnings asked you a question. Sorry, it hasn't come up on my screen yet. No, nah, guy. He goes, oh, oh, guy. Not looking for an Irish supplier, are you? Ah. <laughs> They're more than welcome to to do their demos. Stockers, he meant, Steve meant. Yeah. What did he mean, stockings? No, stockers. Like, I know what he meant. <laughs> yeah. So, free free trip, Leona, hey? Yeah, you, you know, know Leona, the economy class we book in for you, though. <laughs> you know, Leona, you, you, work, you work the same as I do. I'll, I'll go where anybody pays me. Yeah, I'm just about to say to Guy that um, Temple Boy Turnings, Steve, uh, sorry, I've forgotten the last name, Steve, but Steve has just opened a supply, a wood turning supply shop in Old Island. Why Dale? You know, His last name's Twydell. Ah, uh, Twydell, yeah, of course. Steve Banana. <laughs> yeah, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> his logo, his logo, by the way, is Forked Bananas. Forken. His new logo is his... Uh, Display picture on his thing. Temple Boy, did you get a, uh, Steve at least, did you get an answer from David? Because I did ring him. Now, next week, I'm going to be doing a bowl from start to finish. So, Nice one, Robbo. Rob, rather. Rob CP. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Oh, Rob CP said, I thought you would use banana boats, Steve. Yeah, all right. See you later, Neil. Make sure someone doesn't put something in that coffee, Neil. Right. 
Uh, you're on Facebook, are you, Steve? I'll just put the uh, crowd of Quits Island link in the chat. Sorry? I'll just put Steve's uh, store link in the chat. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, Steve's on Facebook. Okay, good. Well, I'll... I'll send you a, a private message about what Dave Dave said, okay? Good night, Nick. Yeah, good night, Nick. You take it easy. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, Rob, I'll put Steve's Facebook page in our little Facebook Messenger chat for you. All right, uh, thank you. I actually messaged it to me because um, – Yeah, I did. That's I, what I did. No, you yeah, didn't. right. You put it in the group one. Oh, the group one. Sorry. Put it in, you put it in the wrong one. one. Yolanda has just come in. Come in. Yolandi. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, you should be able to work off that link, I think, Yolanda, or the, the link that you had. I think it stays the same. They're yeah, done now, Robbo. Thank you, sir. They might have to wait until you've actually finished, ended the live before they can re-watch it. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I found that last night with that um, thing. I watched uh, Costas. Do his oh, thing yeah. last night. Oh, yeah. I didn't watch it last night. I watched it this afternoon. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he does work like I do, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He's a production worker too. Yeah. And, I uh, think he might have knocked um, the flaming wood turner off his perch, though. <laughs> what was that, Sid? I said I think he might have knocked um, Nick off his perch with the flaming... Turner. Oh, why? Because of the flames. I, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I, it's funny, you know. Like, I used to do that years ago with the thing I was, and with pressure packed cans because the hydrocarbons that ignite, not the paint. And um, I got into terrible trouble at work for it, actually. But where I served my apprenticeship, we had a an empty 45 or 90 pound gas bottle and I said to my boss I said you know one day how empty these things are and he said why I said well there's all I reckon there's always some left in them he said oh I'll open up the valve and have a look oh yeah there is look this after we'd filled you know the 20 pounders and uh, LP stove gas bottles and stuff. I said, oh, I wonder if it'll light. I oh, know, you better try it. it. Took us about three times to get it lit. We had to use the oxy torch to light it because it kept blowing the match out. And um, anyway, uh, <laughs> it ignited all right. Now, our workshop was 30 feet high. And it burned all the paint and the galvanising off the tin roof. <laughs> Oh, dear. Safety story there. So, Rob, Robocop put a question in there, Robbo. As a pro attorney, you never know what job's coming into your shop next. So what has been the most challenging piece you've done? Sorry, what was that, Rob? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Most challenging piece I've ever done. Well, it's a piece that I never did, actually. We had an architect. A draftsman sent in a, a job to make a six foot ball that was going to be coated in rubber. Now, six foot in diameter, and I could have laminated it all up. I could do the job, 
but I said, you really don't want to because they told me what it was for. And what it was was to form a plug in one of our reservoirs so that um, I'll get on to you in a minute, Steve. Um, <laughs> what they were going to do was use two divers and it had to be neutral buoyancy. Now, they wanted to plug the outlet hole in the reservoir 30 feet deep so that they could work on the pumps downstream of the reservoir because the water coming through there just kept flowing, of course, and they couldn't shut it off. So I rang them up and I said to, at that time it was the MMBW, Melbourne Metropolitan Board of Works, and I, I said, did a learner draftsman design this, did he? And he said, no, why? I said, well, I'm not an engineer. I said, but I have a bit to do with things like that. I, I said, do you realise how much 30 feet of water weighs on top of a six-foot ball? Oh, no, I can calculate it out. Anyway, it ended up calculating out about 80 or 90 tonne or something like that. I said, yes, it will go in, but how the hell are you going to get it out when you want to open up the, the chute again to let the water through? Oh, I never thought about that. So I didn't do that job. That, was, that would have been one of the most challenging ones. But what I did do was give them the answer to how to do it, and I got paid nicely for that one, I must admit. So most challenging job I've had to do was uh, probably seven-foot tabletops. I had to put a, a groove around, two grooves around them for a Chinese restaurant. We had 12 of them to do. I had to put two grooves around them to fit leather, leather banding into it. And uh, <laughs> when you've got seven feet of timber rotating in front of you, it, uh, it tends to be a bit uh, interesting. So that was one. The other one was probably the one that I've got up on my video thing on the, doing the spanker gaff, which is a, a um, uh, it's like the, the mast on a ship and holds the, the leading sail in front like a, a spinnaker. But that had to be exact because it had metal, metal fittings that um, to go onto it that had to be an exact size. And uh, that was it. Yeah. No, what I did actually, <laughs> Steve, was they made up a steel plate that, oh, well, wait on, I'll show you. That's the easiest way. So what I got them to do was to weld up a thing that was circular like that, that fitted around the outlet pipe that they could bolt into place. And then they had another piece like this that went on the top that slid across so they could slide it. So that when, it, when they went to open it, all they had to do was set up a four wheel drive on the, the bank of the, on the reservoir wall and pull it. Once it started opening, the pressure became virtually nil on it. So I must say I did get paid nicely for that one. <coughs> they had you got paid for nothing, that. Robbo. Didn't have to do anything. Sorry. Didn't no, have to didn't do have anything to do and you got paid for it. Yep. <laughs> now I told him if you paid me enough, I can sort it out for you. He said, yeah, okay. He said, because nobody else around here can think of how to do it. We'll have to try out this timeout button soon, I reckon, just to see how it works. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> Mr. Temple, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Temple Boy James, you little <laughs> leprechaun, you. <laughs> <laughs> I do not use roughing goats on bowls. <laughs> if I see anybody else, if I see anybody else doing it, 
Da je jedna koji znao... Da je jedna koji znao... Da je jedna koji znao... They, uh, they end up with another orifice. <laughs> All right, or an enlarged hit, one. I'm going to hit the put user in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get to select how long for, Jay? Actually, actually, the reason oh, well, I've got <laughs> smoke as well. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> He's told me to save. I don't know how to bring him back. Three hundred seconds. That's five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Steve. <laughs> oh, you didn't. You didn't block him, did you? No, he can no, still no. hear. He's just on timeout. <laughs> oh. That's great. So that's how it works. Yeah, I, I should have I should have done the job actually, Leona, and um, uh, can't because the quote was oh, it was hellishly high, and um, they were prepared to pay it, but I just I just can't do things um, that I know just aren't going to work. So, yeah, good night, Yolanda. It's good to see you in. Hopefully, next week, you might make it, might make it right. <laughs> he came in on another account. <laughs> 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 thank, thank, thank goodness the the, uh, the chat doesn't come up on the thing. You're a mean bastard. <laughs> I'm not going to. See? I was going to go and watch Steve's live, but I don't think I'll go there now. <laughs> See, Steve. <laughs> We have ways of annoying you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't muck so with us, baby. If we, if we wait about two minutes and we ban this one, then that'll be both of them gone for a good three minutes. Yeah, no. All right. Well, I'm, about to shut I'm about to shut it off anyway. Thank you all for attending. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so about the roughing gear, you right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, nice to catch up with you all tonight. Yes, thank you for coming in, and I hope it's been a good night. Hope you've learned a few things. I've had a good night. Things didn't quite work out, but you can see that things do happen occasionally. So um, that's the way it goes. All right, thank you, and good night. I'm about. I'm about to hit the end broadcast button tonight, not wander away from it, okay? Oh, <laughs> ripped off. All right. See you guys. Bye. All right. See you later. Good night.